Right, so it's time to get back to Earth and learn a little bit more about this uh, Umgar Hypewave Caster. Let's talk to the commander. It's good to see you again, Captain. Right, we'll offload the minerals later, but for now I want to learn about this caster. The analysis reads as follows. Subject Hyperwave Broadcaster. Umga Design. Data. This unit is capable of generating extremely intense hyperwave transmissions, though it is otherwise similar to our own casters. Summary. This thing would be great for practical jokes. You could scream boo from an orc cloud to scare the pants or whatever off of everyone in the system. If you used it in hyperspace, there's no telling who might hear you and come running. That's the end of our scientist report. Well, that could be a fun thing to use, but now for the minerals. Let's see how much are you we can get from all these exotics. And the gold and... Oh, look at that! Oh, 33,000! Look at that, that is amazing. Oh, we can buy tons of stuff now. That is awesome. I wasn't expecting that much. I was expecting maybe 25,000 at most, but 33,000. Jeez, that is a lot of RU. So I think we can buy all our fuel up to max again. Oh, this is awesome. So we can definitely go all out with them. Getting all our ship um, ticked up. We want to go and meet the Mel Norme though as well, because we've got quite a lot of few biologicals. And we can go and cash those in. Um, as I said in the previous episode, if you're ever having trouble with minerals, just head to a D uh, Delta Tori, not too far away. Um, just above um, Ilrath Space. Delta Tori is a brilliant place to go and get tons of minerals, so if you're ever having trouble, uh, just go to Delta Tori um, and head there because there's a ton of stuff that I found there. There's like three Sapphire Worlds, which is pretty amazing. Um, I'd say that's probably one of the best star systems in the entire game. Um, I'd be surprised to find anything better. Um, I'm going to move around some of the stuff in my starship just to make it look a little nicer, so that's why I'm removing the crew from um, some of my crew pods. Uh, I'm going to move everything up uh, one or two maybe, and uh, as I said, move everything up one. So there we go. And put another crew pod there. And gonna probably add an extra self defense, uh, no, point defense, sorry, um, thing on the end. I'm gonna put the dynamo there. And I might as well just put, well, what should I put there? I guess an extra fusion blaster, why not? We've got three fusion blasters now. The ones on the end, um, the third one are to the sides, which aren't very useful, but we might as well have them. Three point defense lasers as well, which gives us three points per point defense hit, which is awesome. So we're definitely doing a lot of damage now. Uh, that is really good. So let's fill back up to full crew. 150 crew. And uh, also get a few more ores and nemesis. Um, in fact, I'll get quite a lot because, as I said, I've got so much money. Already burned through like 14,000. Um, but it's fine. The um, Ors Nemesis is a pretty amazing ship though. Since we can't buy anything except for uh, Earthling Cruisers and Ors Nemesis, we can't get any more Spathy ships because of course the Spathy decided that they're just going to flee from the battle and just encase themselves in that annoying Slayer Shield. So, um, yeah. We've got a lot of Ors Nemesis now, we've got 8 Ors Nemesises and we've got 2 Spathy Looters, we're set, we're ready, we've got more firepower on our main flagship, we're quite a um, force to be reckoned with now which is awesome. Um, so hopefully if we do run into any Urquan then we can take them down or at least try to anyway. I've not really battled an Urquan so we don't know how powerful they are, they're probably quite amazing. But I'm going to head back into Quasi Space now because um, it's been a few days since the uh, Aralu have sent their people to go and find out what happened to the um, Umgar and uh, now hopefully they've got the information we need um, hopefully nothing bad happened um, I'm suspecting that the Danyari might have sent the Aralu into Urquan space um, which isn't very good uh, I suppose they also have quasi portals as well so it's not too bad um, if it was any other race and be a bit of a problem really since they'd be kind of stuck stranded in the middle of the Urquan Hello. space but here we go we are pleased to see you again have you any numbness yet good it should be too soon for that too soon by far right so we learned nothing about the Umgar we have discovered something strange and frightening about the Umgar when we approached their vessels we were instantly attacked and the Unga made no attempts to contact our ships or respond to our hails. 
Using our own psionic sensitivities, we determine that they are under some form of psychic compulsion. The source of psionic control commands appears to be Beta Orionis, the Umga's home star. We sent vessels to investigate this location, but none have returned. We fear they are destroyed. We have had no success with our own investigations. Whatever controls the Unga is a threat, but we seem unprepared to deal with it. Perhaps you and your crew are better suited to this mission. If you choose to go to Beta Orionis, take care, child. Whatever controls the Unga now knows of our presence, and it may take measures against us. Right, so the Aralu also believe that this is a threat, this Dinyari. Um, so, it is time to head over to the Zotfot Pick to uh, go and form an alliance with them. And here we are, just outside of Zotfot Pick space. There's something chasing me. I think it's going to be a probe, since it's moving very quickly. Um, although the Zotfot Pick ships also might be quick. But here we go, Alpha Tukane. I'm guessing that planet there. It doesn't look like a water world, um, but it still might be their home world. Most um, places are water worlds, but there are... Um, Sometimes different ones, but here we go. Yep, definitely the Zotfot Pick home world. And they've got a lot of ships. Ah, it is the alien from the Tengesu's Alliance. Just look at those weapon pods on his ship. We hope that during this visit, we can make clear to your species the benefits of a mutual assistance pact. But we're also armed to the teeth, so don't try stealing our atmosphere or anything sneaky like that. Right, so since they're in the Urquan space, I guess we can ask them a lot of questions about the Urquan. So what about any news about the, um, the war? No, we have nothing new to report. Nope, not a thing. Right, so not much at all. Uh, what about happening around Alpha Tukane? close call last week. One of those black ships was snooping around the system. But before it got to our world, some of the green ships warped in, destroyed the black vessel, and then left immediately. We got lucky! Okay, I guess we've mainly come here for an alliance, though. How wonderful! We accept! Hooray! How marvelous! Yeehaw! Captain, we are delighted that your people have made this choice. Now we won't get slaughtered. In exchange for our cooperation helping you with captains and ship designs, all that we ask for is your protection. So we don't get slaughtered. We shall begin fulfilling our commitment at once. We will transport officers and our stinger design to your base immediately. Why, heck! Maybe I'll even make the trip to your planet. I'd make a good starship, Captain. Captain, I'm pretty darn mean in a fight, and there ain't nobody better than me with a thrusting stinger tongue attack. Sounds like a very interesting ship, but now I want some more information. What do you want to know? Just ask away. So I'm just going to go down the line here. So what about other alien races? This space exploration stuff is uh, kind of new to us. Besides the green alien ship, which have only tried to kill us, and the black alien ship, which have actually been quite successful at killing us. The only other starships we have encountered are strange tumbling red probes, which profess to be on a peaceful mission. But then attack like slavering the Brankies. We believe that the probes are actually robotic scouts, which have suffered some kind of malfunction resulting in their aberrant behavior. And what's worse, they are multiplying. Yes, that's true. The probes seem to be replicating at a geometric rate. Hey! That means if there was only one last week, then next month... Uh, wait a minute. Let me calculate. Uh, uh, that means next month there'll be a whole mess of those things. By backtracing the probe's course path, we have been able to calculate that the source of the probes is somewhere on a direct line that includes our star and Epsilon Muske. Go get them, Captain! Right, that might help us find out where the probes are coming from so that we can stop them. But now we want to know about the Stinger Starship so because I, I don't care about their people, really. The Stinger is the peak of our technological prowess. It's totally awesome! These vessels are cheap to build, 
and can be quite effective in short-range combat. They turn on a, on a, well, a small round thing that's real small. Remember though, against most ships, the Stinger must close distance immediately and give unrelenting tongue attacks until either the enemy or the Stinger are destroyed. Yeah, the tonguing is the best part. Judging by the size of the ships, I don't think they're going to be very good, but what about the guy at the back? Does he ever see anything? Nope. Not a word. No, so he never says anything. He's the, um, the fart, isn't he? Yeah. Anything um, else? I think they've given us enough information, so we'll just say goodbye. goodbye. See ya! Goodbye, Zotfot Pick. You've been really useful in pretty much being completely useless. Okay, so let's get out of this star system. I want to go and check out some of their colonies, though, because they did say the scouts said all of their colonies have been destroyed. So there might be some cool stuff there that we can take. So if they've left anything behind, maybe. So I'm going to head over to Beak Beta Toucanay, since I guess the Toucanay stars are where they all their colonies were. And there's a lot of ships closing on me, so I'm going to have to be quick here. There we go. Into Beta Beat to Kanae, and oh, there's some horrible black ships. Are these black ships that the Zotfuck have been talking about? Okay, I'm just gonna save the game here. Okay, do we want to go and um, meet them? Oh, I'm very scared to do this. Do you know what? We save the game, hell yeah, we'll just go and meet them and completely destroy them. Let's go. Oh, there are four of them. Let's converse. We are the Urquan Core R. We cleanse our destiny. You will soon die. Make whatever rituals are necessary for your species. Ooh, uh, well, uh, they sound pretty, uh, pretty tough. These guys, um, they are pretty much straight away just gonna tell us we're gonna die. Um, I think we're gonna have to use these words right now. Hold! What you're doing is wrong. Why do you do this thing? Hopefully that works. The words. The words. The words. Alien, you have spoken the words. You have spoken them rightly. We will explain to you about the Dinyari, our slave masters. The Taelo, our only friends. Whom we exterminated. And our reasons why we cleanse the galaxy of all other sentient life. We have explained this before, over 20,000 years ago. Your words, why do you do this thing? Echo that ancient plea. You see, alien, we were a proud and mighty race who were cruelly enslaved. For thousands of years, we had no free will. We were nothing more than tools. Never again will anyone enslave our people. We cleanse the galaxy of such threats. Okay, so they're going to give us a chance to talk to them. So first of all, let's just ask who these Taelo guys were. Of all the species we have met, only the Taelo did not trigger our instinctive territoriality. They were the only people we could stand with or talk to without the hunter inside us screaming, kill the interloper, rip out its life. We believe that the same factors that made the Tai Lo non-threatening to us, their unusual rock-like biology, also gave the Tai Lo natural immunity to the Dinyari's psychic compulsion. The Dinyari would not permit this. After they had conquered all six of the other races in the milieu, they commanded us to attack the Tai Lo, and we did. The Tai Lo would not fight back. They died. Right, so, that's a pretty telling tale. The Dinyaro, definitely some pretty evil guys. We've it met one, but imagine a whole group of them. One of our milieu scout ships first met the Dinyari, the creatures you know as our talking pets. But the Dinyari were different then. They were evilly intelligent and wielded psychic powers to control the minds of others. They wanted to rule the universe. We had no choice but to give it to them. Our Urquan scout ships transported the Dinyari through the milieu. The war for dominance, such as it was, was quick and bloodless. Within weeks, the Dinyari controlled all races but one, the Taelo. Right, so the Taelo were, were um, 
immune to the Dinyari's um, psychic power, so they got the other race to kill them. We were unthinking slaves to the Dinyari. Like the five other surviving races of the old milieu, we had no choice. The Dinyari's compulsion was too strong to resist. But the Dinyari were not satisfied with their slave races. The Yuli and the Draw were inferior, they decided. And so they instructed us to incinerate their worlds. And we did. The Dinyari had a special liking for us, Ur Kwan. So they began to tinker with our genes. To improve us. Their favored slaves. Their efforts to split the Ur Kwan into two sub-races. The Green Ur Kwan. A vet scientists and bureaucrats. And the Black Ur Kwan. Their effectuators. The builders. The fighters. The doers. The Kor R are the Black Urquan. The Kazerts are the Green. I grow tired of talking alien, and your time grows short. I will continue for but a moment longer. When we discovered that intense pain could block the Dinyari's mental powers, we were able to destroy them, but it took years. Can you imagine, alien, what it must have been like to wear an excruciator? To live in endless screaming pain for months on end. No. Gee, so that's how they had to kill the Dinyari by just completely just destroying themselves, giving them some so much pain. And um, that's why there's now the normal Urquan and these Kora because the Dinyari um, tinkered with them. World, the descendants of solitary hunters. In a world where one species is the dominant killer, one's only threat is one's brother, one's sister any one of one species. Civilization did not come easily to us. We earned it. We mastered our hatreds and murderous desires to form a mighty culture. In those ancient days, there was no Kor Ah or Kazertsa, only the Urquan. We explored our world, and then the space beyond. Here we met the six races of the sentient milieu, here we met the Tailo, the only species we ever called friend. Our association with the Tailo and the Milieu lasted for 3,000 years. We, the Urquan, who could not tolerate the presence of others, became the Milieu's scouts. Their solitary explorers. Well, that's an awesome amount of information. That's pretty telling, but I think we've got to no, go now. Please not. There is more you must hear. Right. When the war was over, the great core R rose from our ranks and declared the path of now and forever. We would cleanse the galaxy. No one would ever threaten the Urquan this way again. We had cleansed one of the three remaining milieu races and were in orbit around a second's home world. From the surface came a plea, identical to the words you spoke a few moments ago. The one-eyed creatures, the male gnome, asked so simply, so clearly, that we felt compelled to explain. While we did so, the Xertza appeared. They would not permit us to destroy, they said. Enslave, yes. In prison, yes. But never destroy. The moment was tense. Someone opened fire. The first doctrinal war had begun. While we fought, the male known escaped. We never found them again. When our battle was done, we, the Kor Ah, were defeated. However, the Kazertsa let us go. We were exiled. We traveled through space. We built the strength of our battle fleets, and continued our plan to cleanse threats from the galaxy for all Ur Kwan. You have heard our words, and perhaps you understand us a bit better. But now, it is time for us to cleanse you. Uh-oh.